I was sitting at my desk, ready to start my day. I wanted to scan something like this bear brochure, but this time, instead of scanning and then airdropping, here is this video A. I decided to go to the notes app on my MacBook, select the scan documents, and boom, my phone camera turned on automatically and it was ready to scan away. And I'm gonna show you interesting hidden features I've learned about using my MacBook Pro so far to speed up my workflow and have a more enjoyable time with it. Let me start by telling you about the magic of the option key. Whenever I press and hold the option key, I can access hidden options I never knew existed before in every menu. One of my favorite option key tricks is duplicating files. I just hold down the option key while dragging the file and it duplicates it for me. Whenever I'm working on a project with a ton of subfolders, instead of expanding every single folder one by one, I just hold down the option key and click on the arrow next to the folder and all the subfolders expand and I can see everything at once. One thing that I love about is the markup feature. When I double click on an image, immediately I would see the image preview environment. From there, I can click on the markup button the markup toolbar appears with all these amazing tools. And if I want to mark up the image with different pens and colors, I just use the buttons provided. But the coolest thing is that I can also add a text box to any image or PDF and insert text. Plus, I can add my signature in three different ways. By signing on a paper and scanning it through the camera, using my trackpad and finger, or even signing on my iPhone and seeing it appear on my MacBook. How cool is that? Another cool thing is the ability to create PDFs from scan docs or images. All you have to do is select the images, right click and choose create PDF. No need for an extra application. And if you want to export pages from your PDF as PNG or JPEG files, just go to File, choose Export and select the format you want. And finally, if I just need to convert the format of an image or change its size, I simply right click on the image and choose Convert. Then change the settings as needed. It's seriously that easy. Sometimes, I would just right click on the image and choose the markup option to see the tools without going to the preview environment first. And then, if I tap on this iPhone icon here, it'll automatically show me the picture with these tools on my iPhone too. This makes it so much easier to edit images that need a touch screen to make changes at the same time. And also, you can remove a background from an image by doing right click on the image and in the quick action, choose remove background. It's so easy. You guys know it can be really frustrating when you can't use the arrow keys to navigate through a list of images after double clicking on them. Don't worry, just select all the files you want to view together, hit the space bar, and now you can use the arrow keys to move through them easily. Plus, if you come across an image with text in it, you can copy the text directly and paste it anywhere you want, including your iPhone. Pretty cool, right? Sometimes, I just want to take a quick look inside a file before actually opening it. You know, just hover over the file and tap the spacebar. It gives you a quick preview of what's inside. You can even use it for web pages too. For example, while you're searching for something using the spotlight search with command space, just hit spacebar to preview that file or web page. So convenient. If I ever want a file to open with a specific app, I just right click on it and hit get info. Then I go to open with, choose my preferred app and click change all. That way the file always opens with my favorite app, like my go-to media player for movies. It's a time saver. When I come across a word that I'm not sure about, I want to quickly look up its meaning. All I have to do is highlight the word and press down on it with a little extra pressure to bring up a pop-up with the definition. If I want to see what's inside the folder or file, I just force touch its icon to bring up a preview. And if I want to rename a folder or file, I simply for such its name and type in a new one. Oh, you haven't set this globe button to access emojis, right? If you haven't seen my previous video on setting up your new MacBook Pro, definitely check it out for some cool features. And if you want to be tech buddies, hit that subscribe. First Touch also works for web pages. When I'm browsing the web and want to quickly preview a link without opening it, I can just use First Touch on that website link to see what's inside. 
I would do this for playing videos on YouTube sometimes. I would force click on every video I like and if there is really something for me, I would tap on that to play completely. I love how convenient is this. When it comes to the web browser, I like to customize Safari. I click the settings button on the first page and change the start page appearance with one of these wallpapers. For multitasking, I use the picture in picture feature in YouTube. I right click on the audio icon in the Safari toolbar while the video is playing and choose the picture in picture option. So I can do other things like researching or scripting while the video is playing in a small window. Also, when I want to copy the URL, I use Command L to highlight the web URL instantly and Command C to copy. There are some hotkeys that are actually time saving. One of them is using Shift Command 4 to select an area of the screen and then press spacebar so the icon turns into a camera. This way, you can click on any open window to get a screenshot of just that window or interface element like the dock or menu bar. And of course, you already know that to see the screenshot settings and choose between them, you can go for Command Shift 5 and start playing with these settings here. I like to adjust the volume up or down by holding Shift option and then hitting F 11 or F12 for volume and F1 or F2 for the brightness. This way I can increase them or decrease them more precisely. The next hotkey I use a lot is for when a program stops responding and I can't quit it. I would hold down command option escape and force quit the app. Or another way is to go down to the dock, right click, hold down the option and force quit. Also sometimes I've got a bunch of windows open all together. The easy way to move windows in the background without selecting them is by holding down the command button and move those windows just like that. Finally, if you can't delete a file, it's probably because you just hit delete. Well, it doesn't work on MacBook. So just hold command delete to delete the selected file. And if you wanna also empty the trash, just press command shift delete to do it. Handoff is amazing. I usually use it when I wanna copy and paste an image or text from one of my Apple devices to another. It's also great for more important tasks like scanning documents. I just go to notes on my MacBook, right click and scan docs. My iPhone automatically switches to the camera and I can scan the docs. Just remember to log in with the same account on all of your devices. I like to have important apps like Notes and Final Cut Pro open automatically whenever I turn on my Mac. To set this up, I simply right click on the app icon in the dock, choose Options and then select Open and Login. This way, every day when I start my Mac, all my work-related apps will automatically open without me having to go through them one by one, which really saves me time. When I'm in a hurry and my desktop is a mess, I don't always have time to organize all my folders. I just right-click on the desktop and use Stacks to quickly organize all the files by type. Also, if I have an important folder, like my work folder, I'll drag it to the Finder sidebar or I can open the folder and from the menu at the top, click add to sidebar so whenever I open the finder it's always in front of me and organized sometimes I get lost within my open applications and windows so I usually do three things to get better and organized one is using the stage manager if I turn it on from the settings or menu up here it shows all my open browsers, windows, and apps, so I can switch between them while seeing all of them at the same time. The other thing I do is mission control. I create different desktops for different tasks and open the related apps in each of them. This helps me keep my mind more organized when doing multiple tasks. I can simply swipe up on my trackpad with four fingers to choose between different desktops or swipe left or right to select the next or previous desktop and start working on a different project. The last thing I usually do is press command tab to see all my open apps. While holding the command button, I can cycle through each app by tapping the tab key and choose between them. 
Another way to organize and clean up a messy folder is to go to Finder and select Show View Options. To avoid having floating folders, which is really annoying, I enable Snap to Grid. This makes everything look more organized. Navigating. When I'm tapping on everything, I like to just tap on the trackpad to click. I always change it in Preferences. I go to Trackpad and select Tap to Click. When I want to drag the windows, instead of physically tapping and dragging, I'd like to simply drag the windows with three fingers. So I prefer to turn on three finger right click. I do this by going to System Preferences, Accessibility, Pointer, Control, and change it to drag with three fingers. Sometimes I'm browsing websites or using an app and I need to take notes, but I don't want to switch back and forth between windows. Really annoying, you know? So what I do is double tap on a single node in the notes app to open it in a new window. Then I go to the files section and select keep on top. This way my notes will stay on top of everything else on my screen and won't disappear while I'm researching or working on something. It's a simple trick but it makes things so much easier for me. So there you have it guys, these features have seriously made my experience with my MacBook so much better. And if you want to check out the first 10 things I always do to set up my MacBook Pro, go watch my video. See you guys with more tips and tricks in my next video. Bye!